Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be working with functions. We have f of x equals x squared minus 4x and f of g of x which is the composition of f with g equals x minus 3 times g of x. Now we're basically going to be solving for what, right? Well, it looks like since we already know f of x, it will make sense if you solve for g of x. So it's kind of like open-ended. We can find g of x. We could also find a bunch of different values. We can find g of f of x. Once we find g of x, we can pretty much find anything. Okay, let's take a look. So we know that f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x. How could we use that definition to work with the second equation? The second equation has f on the left-hand side. So when you are composing two functions, f of g basically means that you need to take g of x, whatever that is, we don't know what it is at this moment, right? And replace the x in f of x with that. So here's how we're going to handle this problem. We do need f of something. So if you want, which probably makes this problem a little easier, call this whole thing t. I mean, any variable is fine, but I'm going to go ahead and call this t. g of x equals t. So I'm going to set it equal to t. Right? And then, of course, we have another g of x here. That's also t. Same thing, right? Okay. Now, let's rewrite our equation with this new substitution. We get f of t equals x. By the way, when you replace g of x with t, what do you replace x with? Nothing. I mean, should we do inverse function? No, you don't really need to get into that. Let's just keep it simple and x is as is. So f of t is going to be x minus 3t. Okay? So now what are we trying to find though? Our goal is to solve for t, right? First step. So from here, how do you find t? That's our goal. And remember, t is a function of x, okay? Not just like a constant or any other variable. That's unrelated. So, here's the good thing. We have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x, so we can find f of t. So, if you know that f of x is equal to this, what does f of t mean? It just means replace x with t on both sides. So, f of t becomes t squared minus 4t. Let's go ahead and substitute that here. t squared minus 4t for f of t. And that is equal to x minus 3t. Again, what's our goal? to solve for t. So from this equation, from this equation, let's go ahead and isolate t. Can we? Not really, but we can put the t terms on the same side and then everything else on the other side, or we can put everything on the same side, which is better. I'll tell you in a little bit why it's better to put everything on the same side. Maybe, maybe you already know the answer. Anyways, bring this over here by adding 3t. So if you add 3t to this, you're going to get t squared minus 4t plus 3t, which is t squared minus 1t, or you can just write it as t. Okay? And that's equal to x, but I'm going to subtract x from both sides and put everything on the left. It's usually better if, unless you're writing from right to left anyways, uh, you know, or upside down sometimes, right? So this is our equation, and always remember, keep in mind what we're trying to solve for, which is t. So, why did we put everything on the same side? Because now this becomes a quadratic equation. So we're going to solve for t, very easy to solve. Either you can use completing the square, because this is not factorable. Well, it sort of is, but it's quite complicated. Or use the formula. I mean, quadratic formula works real well, I would recommend. So, t equals, remember, this is quadratic in t, not x, obviously, right? So you have to look at the coefficients of t squared and t and the constant. The constant in this case is negative x. The coefficient of t is negative 1. And as you know, the formula starts with negative b, right? Which is 1. Plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 again. You just square this number. Minus 4ac, 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative x. You have to take the negative sign because it's supposed to be plus c or constant and then this is divided by 2a but a is 1 so it's going to be 2 that's it we're done right okay 
Case closed? Not yet. Let's go ahead and simplify this. And also, let's remember what T stands for. T stands for hmm, G of X, right? Okay, great. So we're trying to solve for T, which is G of X, but let's go ahead and simplify it. From here, G of X becomes 1 plus minus the square root of 1 plus 4X all over 2. So we were trying to solve for G of X, let's say, and we got it. But why, are, why is there a plus minus sign? Because there are two solutions. So we can write first solution as G of X equals 1 plus the square root of 1 plus X divided by 2. And then the other one as 1 minus the square root of 1 plus 4X divided by 2. Now, if you look at these equations carefully, does that remind you of something? I think it reminds me something like whenever you have an infinite radical expression. Does that remind you of that? For example, if I have something like this, how do I solve it, right? What does this have to do with that? I'll show you in a little bit. But when you have an equation like this, you know, normally you would set it equal to, let's say, a, and then this would also be a, and then we would square both sides, and then this would give you what? From here, I think we have a solution, right? Um, well, looks like 3 is the solution. So a equals 3 would be the solution. But you could also do it with a shortcut. I think I talked about this in one of the videos. I can't remember when. But factor 6 into two consecutive numbers, preferably integers, and then the larger one is the answer because of the plus sign. If you have a minus sign, then it is going to be the other one, right? <laughs> Makes sense? So what happens if we have an x, right? Okay, let's take a look. So when you have an x like this, let's set it equal to a again, and then this is going to be x plus a, square both sides, and you're going to get something like this, and when you solve this equation for a, you're going to get the same thing. Wow, isn't that interesting? Why is that happening though? Something to think about, right? So our function is kind of like an infinite expression, but it doesn't look like it, does it? Anyways, that's something to think about. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you, but those are going to be the solutions, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.